Hey everybody, welcome back to the Pet Food Puzzle Guy. My name is Glenn. And um, on this video, we're gonna discuss something that uh, you hear a lot if you're looking at pet food and trying to do your own research. And that is that um, vitamins and minerals, um, they're cooked out of kibble. Uh, they're just destroyed in the over-processing of kibble. And that's why those evil kibble companies have to go ahead and put synthetic vitamins and minerals back into the food because they've all been cooked out. And that's why when you buy their fresh uh, or air-dried or freeze-dried or whatever you want, frozen, whatever you want to call it, theirs is so much better because they just naturally put the vitamins and minerals in with the ingredients. And I have to admit, that sounds so great. I mean, if you're into all natural, you, you buy your own food at Sprouts or, or Whole Foods, you know, and uh, so you want to do that for your pet. So that just sounds so great. I don't want to give it synthetic vitamins and minerals when I can just feed, uh, feed real ingredients. They love that word real and fresh ingredients and whole ingredients and get all the vitamins and minerals that my pet needs. That just sounds so good, doesn't it? So first of all, the whole idea that all the vitamins and minerals are cooked out of the food because it's uh, cooked at such high temperatures and it's over-processed and all that, first of all, that's just BS, okay? Uh, is there a certain amount of denaturing of vitamins and, and a, a few amino acids? Absolutely easily corrected by either adding a little more of that ingredient or by supplementing different uh, sources or especially when it comes to vitamins and minerals, uh, we can easily uh, replace anything that's lost in the cooking process. That's not a problem. But the bigger question really is, which is healthier for your pet? Uh, feeding whole ingredients that obviously provide vitamins and, and minerals, and, and you can study which ones have higher levels of this vitamin or that mineral, whatever. Um, or actually doing a careful supplementation and making sure that your pet gets all the vitamins and minerals they need, and most important, that they're getting them at the correct ratios. So I wanna show you this, this, uh, this mineral wheel, and uh, it, it's a chart that um, shows an interrelationship of minerals to each other. This isn't vitamins, it's all just minerals. And um, I used to use this slide when, when it was in a PowerPoint slide. It was, it was cool because it was full color and it was interactive and all the arrows would go all over the place. So I'll put it up here. But basically, you're not, it's going to be an eye chart. I'm sure you're not going to be able to read a lot of it. But basically, you, you'll see there's uh, minerals around the circle. And it shows you lines. And those lines, you probably can't tell, but there's arrow directional arrows on there showing that calcium goes down and it hits zinc and uh, and phosphorus hits zinc and calcium hits phosphorus and what it's basically showing is the interrelational um, effect of each mineral on other minerals and what it's pointing out is that if you have an excess of a mineral such as calcium guess what it will bind the zinc and you'll have a zinc deficiency. Or if there's too much calcium and the ratio of calcium to phosphorus is incorrect, you'll have a phosphorus deficiency. Even though there's enough phosphorus in the diet coming from whatever ingredient, there is gonna be a deficiency because of the excess calcium, okay? Um, uh, Imes had a problem with excess calcium back in the late 80s and black dogs that were in dog shows were turning red. The black coats were turning red and they found out it was due to a zinc deficiency there was plenty of zinc in the diet. The problem was there was too much calcium. And many of these breeders were adding calcium themselves. So, so, so what is this point? What's the whole point of this wheel? What is the story? And I, and I have to a shout out to Abby, young lady that I met on Facebook uh, in a conversation, of course, about pet food. And um, she put this chart up. And I had lost it over the years, and especially when I retired. So I, I, Abby, I don't know if you're going to see this or not, but thank you so much for this chart because it it drives home the point that thinking you're just going to feed whole ingredients and meet the uh, nutri nutritional needs, vitamin and mineral wise, of a diet. Sure, you're, you're adding vitamins, you're adding minerals in those different ingredients, but the ratio of those, you have absolutely no control over or idea of what you're really delivering. So real quick. Calcium, we talk about that a lot. Okay, a lot of people supplement calcium for some reason. I'm not sure why, even with a, 
with pregnant uh, females and that's not you know eclampsia there's a lot of other issues that can occur just feed a good puppy food do not be supplementing calcium to your pregnant female at home but uh, that's another <laughs> that's another story but too much calcium well excess calcium binds phosphorus it binds iodine I've already mentioned it binds zinc, okay? Those are just a few that are on this chart. You probably can't make it out unless you want to take a picture of it and zoom in and really check it out. It's amazing. Every single mineral on there affects another mineral or is affected by another mineral. And some are, are multiple, especially calcium, phosphorus, and a few others. Um, sodium. Too much sodium in the diet, you end up with a potassium deficiency. But too much potassium and you bind magnesium and you end up with a magnesium deficiency. Okay, it's all on this, this wheel here if you want to zoom it in. And um, uh, what else do we have? Manganese. Uh, too much manganese in the diet and you have an iron deficiency in that diet. So think about it. If that's true, which it is, okay, that's science. It's not theory or something a breeder came up with, whatever. Um, no offense, breeders. I'm just, this is scientific here, okay? Um, the point is, when you're feeding a diet and you're adding this ingredient and that ingredient, whatever, you have no idea the vitamin mineral composition that you're feeding that dog. You just don't. There could be an extremely high excessive level of calcium in that diet or, or zinc or iron or whatever. Does that sound like, okay, that's natural. I'll give it to you. That's natural. But does that make as much sense as board certified nutritionists that know exactly how much of all those minerals, what are there? There's about 11 or 13 minerals, I think, on that wheel. Um, having them, having a, uh, having it supplemented so that knowing the absorption of each of those minerals and how they interact with each other, that's what you are getting when you buy a good, reputable company that has the board certified nutritionist and the chemists and they know what they're doing. They're basically, think about this wheel, they're applying this science to the formulation of that diet. You're not doing that in your kitchen. Now you could argue, you know, and, and it's true, Every day, do we need to get the exact amount? I mean, I'm sure I have days where my carb level is through the roof compared to my protein level. And there's days where my protein is probably really high and maybe the carbs are low. That wouldn't happen very often, but <laughs> I'm sure it does. But as far as my mineral content or any of that, boy, I'm sure it's all over the place. And there is a theory out there that, you know, well, it's not like every day you need optimal exact levels. It's just over time that you need to get you know, uh, a correct amount of all them. And that's probably true. But the point is, if we can make it optimal in your dog's diet or your cat's diet, why wouldn't we do that? And especially when we look at things like, and watch any of my other videos, too much sodium, that can be unhealthy for, for a cat in early kidney disease, uh, too much magnesium, um, what other, uh, calcium, um, uh, phosphorus, all those that, that are, that, um, Basically, the, the minerals are composed of in that cat that's predisposed to kidney stones or, or to urinary tract stones, you're feeding those excess minerals. Minerals matter. So when you look at this wheel, this is real science. This is what a formulated diet, not formulated on the bag, but you know, a created diet that's designed to control these micronutrients. Now, these are micronutrients. Everybody wants to talk about macronutrients, protein, fat, carbs. Everybody wants to talk about that. Maybe they'll talk about fiber a little bit. Yeah, that's important and that's pretty easy to see. This is the important stuff that you don't see. This is the the companies know. No one's looking at this stuff. No one's looking at it. And that's why a food company can say, oh, Glenn's all natural dog food. I don't add any synthetic vitamins or minerals. They're all in the the nutrient packed ingredients fresh from the farm that I put in this diet. Yeah, you know what? It sounds great. That's not what nutrition science is. So again, I'm going to keep this short because I don't really need to say much more. Supplementing a diet with a vitamin mineral package is essential for optimal nutrition. If you think you're doing that just because you're buying chickens that have never been in a cage from Jim Bob's farm down the road, or you're feeding fresh broccoli or, or whole apples, whatever, or blueberries, everybody loves their blueberries, okay? That's not, that's not science, that's not nutrition. It, that, all that is is feel good marketing, and yes, it works, I understand. It does feel good to think that's what you're feeding your pet, dog or cat, but I'm sorry, 
nutrition science is what is going to do that extra step of looking at micronutrients and keeping your pet healthy and reducing the risk of especially urinary stones and kidney disease in cats. Uh, kidney disease in dogs is almost as common. Um, so that's what you're paying for in a good diet that actually does that. So again, uh, I'm very thankful for Abby for um, putting this this chart out there because uh, I really miss not having it and it explains it in picture form much better than I probably just did. And um, so anyway, by the way, this is Thanksgiving uh, week. I always, most holidays, I try to stretch into the into the week, even birthdays, we try to stretch into birthday week. So anyway, this is Thanksgiving Day uh, week, and uh, I'm um, I'm aware. I'm sure there's plenty of people struggling with a lot of things out there. Uh, my family's had some really, really deep struggles, um, actually since 2020. So it, it's been quite a battle this this decade. Um, but you know what? There's always, always, always so much for us to be thankful for. So I uh, I just uh, hope that if you're one of those folks that uh, be, being thankful is not exactly the feeling that comes naturally right now because of what you're going through, uh, you know, sometimes being thankful is a choice. And uh, it's important that we be thankful for what we do have, the blessings we do have. And speaking of blessings, uh, this channel, I think, is about seven, eight months old now. And I am, I am really grateful this Thanksgiving for uh, the community of new friends I've met um, through this channel and uh, I really thought going into this, my son Josh that, told, that got me into this said, you know, you're going to have people saying all kinds of horrible things and all that. And there's been so little of that. And I have tried to be nice uh, as well. I, I There is a part of me, though I tell you, that loves to just dig and, and, and get rude. Uh, but hopefully I have not done that. And uh, even Ed will have to admit I've been nice in the last uh, couple months. So anyway... Thank you very much. I, again, have a happy Thanksgiving, and I hope this mineral conversation, please, I'm sure it'll lead some of you to uh, leave in some comments, but it's a great illustration of science is so much better than nature, okay? I, I know that sounds, it doesn't seem correct that nature should be perfect, but no, not when it comes to dogs and cats. We can do much, much better than nature. So anyway, have a good one.